Welcome to the baseball analytics workshop. Um, my name is Patrick Cummins. A um, little bit about me. I interned in Major League Baseball last some summer as a data analyst intern. That was more so on the business intelligence side of things, but I do know a lot about baseball and I know a lot about analytics. Data science major here at UConn. I'm a junior. And um, yeah, that's all you need to know. Um, so these are some of the this core technical concepts that we're going to be covering is data visualization techniques and general graphing. This is going to be, yes. Do you think that works? What? Uh, Very calm, thank you. Um, <laughs> We're going to lean into data visualization pretty heavily here. Um, some linear regression using Python, and we're going to be using a lot of pandas, much like my last presenter, um, doing some data manipulation and some analysis. And then some of the baseball concepts that we're going to be getting into, i um, going to touch on saber metrics a little bit, um, and then look at the relationship between run expectancy and win expectancy. So look at run differential and win percentage. And then lastly, we're going to look at um, some different career trajectories and how you can plot those and how you can kind of contextualize a player's overall career. And then I just wanted to touch on a couple of important uh, statistics that we're going to be using a lot today. Um, batting average, that one's pretty simple. Hits over at bats. Um, great way of telling if you're good at hitting. Then we also have slugging percentage, which is a little bit different. Um, that's kind of like uh, batting average with each um, base is weighted. So if you hit a double, it's worth two. If you hit a triple, it's worth three. And then if you hit a home run, it's worth four. And then it's still divided by. And then look at this. So it's slugging, it's basically, you know, how effective is your hitting? Are you good at getting on base and then getting extra base hits? On base percentage, that's um, hits plus walks plus hit by pitches. Sometimes you've been hit by a pitch. Uh, divided by sacrifice flies, uh, at bats, and um, there's one more, but they're pretty simple. Um, that one, again, how good are you at just getting on base and generating the ability to get the ball in play and getting on? And then lastly, OPS, which we're going to be looking a lot at, which is just on base plus slugging, which is a more uh, encompassing uh, hitting statistic rather than just one or the other. And then um, I'll ask again, just raise your hand if you've seen Moneyball. Sabermetrics essentially came from uh, the movie Moneyball, which is based off of a book, which is based off of a story, which is, which is derived from a book written by a guy called Bill James, who is basically the inventor of sabermetrics. Uh, the definition here is um, the empirical analysis of baseball, especially baseball statistics that measure in-game activity. And so why is this important? Well, ever since Moneyball, for those who haven't seen it, in 2001, the Oakland Athletics had an incredibly small payroll um, but used sabermetrics and statistics in a way that baseball hadn't seen before to create a World Series contending team. And so after that, analytics have become an essential part of baseball in understanding the game rather than just using the eye test or the simple statistics that were originally used. Um, and so some examples of sabermetrics are um, weighted runs created plus, which is um, even more so uh, overall offensive encompassing stat that's also average to 100. So the league average is 100, and so if you're above 100 or below 100, it's kind of easier to tell how good of a hitter you are. OPS plus is just OPS, but again, average to 100, so it's easier to compare across the entire league. And then lastly, FIP, which is fielding independent pitching, so def defense independent ERA. So it's able to look at a pitcher's um, ability to pitch without having the impact of errors or kind of external factors. Um, so that's sabermetrics. And then the um, Plotly is going to be the graphing library in Python that we're using today. My, pre my predecessor talked a little bit about matplotlib, which is a more simplistic uh, graphing library. But since this is, this is the intermediate level of Python, I wanted to step, up, step it up a little bit because Plotly is a little bit more sophisticated. It's all about creating professional looking graphs simply and easily. And so that's why I wanted to use it because I want you guys to be able to use Plotly because published graphs from Plotly, I believe, look and have more quality than just kind of easily generated matplotlib ones. And there's a strong Plotly community because I know that coding is difficult. And so having people on the internet that you can reach out to and say, how does this work is important. And there is a big 
quality community online. And so um, <clears throat> where we got our data from is layman's or le yeah, layman's database, which contains batting, fielding, and pitching statistics from 1871 to the present. An incredible resource. Um, it has standings, team stats, managerial records, postseason statistics, um, stadium information, any information about baseball you'd ever need is just in one zip folder that's a download. It's very incredible, and that's where our data is going to be coming from today. So the first thing we did um, is install the libraries and packages we're using. There's a bunch because I'm pulling from a bunch of different resources, uh, but you can see Plotly, you can see NumPy, um, which is and SciPy, and then we get from these pandas and plotly express which is a um, module within plotly that makes some of the graphing easier and simple and then don't worry about the the third line that's just for the formatting of our output um, and so the first thing we do is we read in one of our data sets which i'm actually going to just do this these are all of the um, csv files which contain the data that we're going to be using and manipulating and so the first one we're reading in is Hall of Fame batting, which is um, information regarding um, all of the players in the Hall of Fame currently. And so here's just a look at what a pandas data frame looks like. And you can see this PD here is what we labeled pandas as. So whenever we need to use a function within pandas, we can just reference it by using PD. And so we read the CSV and um, it automatically, when you assign a variable using the read CSV function, it is, it is a data frame. And so boom. This is what a data frame looks like. You can see there's a ton of information that we can use to understand more about baseball. And so now, um, just wanted to show off some things you can do with data frames and columns in Pandas data frames. So um, to look at eras, I wanted to take a look at different eras of baseball, but they didn't include that in the data frame. So we added a column by looking at um, each player's, what what, era each player was in during the middle of their career. I thought that was a good way of figuring that. And then using by, by using the cut function in Pandas, we can create um, bins of each year that is the first and last year of each era. So from 1800 to 1900 is the 19th century. From 1900 to 1919 is lively ball. From 1919 and so on, it's dead ball. Integration, expansion, free agency, and long ball. Those are the kind of well-known eras of baseball because the game has changed a lot. So now let's use this to make our first graph. So let's say I wanted to know how many Hall of Fame players played in each different era. This is what we can do now. Um, so we're gonna create a new variable frequency, shorten it to freak, um, which is the um, Hall of Fame, which is the era column in Hall of Fame, which we created above, but um, counting the values, so the frequencies for each, for each um, player in each era. And then we use two frame to frame function, which creates a data frame with the information that we just got. And then we use the reset index function um, to reset the index of the data frame because sometimes pandas data frames can be tricky and the index is actually where we want our first column to be. So we reset it and include the, um, the index because it is good to have. And then this is what our data frame looks like now. And so if we wanted to graph this, we just use, we call the Plotly Express using PX and we create a bar graph and voila. Um, you can see our X is uh, the frequency, which is the era, and then our Y is the frequency. And so you just made a graph using Python. It's pretty cool. You can do um, a lot of this. You can do it as a pie chart, similar syntax, just with pie. Um, now you have a pie chart. You can use a dot plot, which is scatter, which my predecessor also used. Um, same syntax again. We use the show function to show uh, the plots that we make. Um, just different ways of representing the same data, but it just shows you that multiple graphs can show this same information in different ways. Um, and then maybe even a histogram. And then here we also used one of the um, cooler functions in Plotly, which is update traces. Plotly has a lot of functions that you can use to um, get into the nitty gritty of your visualization details, like fine tune things. And so what I did here was just make lines which um, distinguish the different um, bins that we have. And so, yeah, the, it, with some of the more sophisticated graphing that we're going to do throughout this, you can see some of the other um, plotly kind of fine tuning that you can do. And then just um, using the index function, checking out every player, 
um, on a graph, looking just to see anything, just showing off the index function. And then a strip chart, which we'll get to later. This can be pretty useful. So again, just different ways of showing the same information, but understanding how many types of graphs you can use in Poly. And then now if we wanted to do some two-factor plotting, we're going to use that OPS statistic that I talked about, not OPS plus because it's hard to track for um, older players. And I just think it's um, easier. We're going to use um, the Hall of Fame batting data frame. And we're going to use two different variables. We're going to use the mid-career. So where were they at the middle of their career and what was their OPS? Um, you'd think this is their peak, is the middle of their career, but it's not. And I'll get into that later. Um, and I've added a lowest trend line, which is a um, locally weighted scatter plot smoothing line. So it's a smooth, smoothing trend line to showcase some of Plotly's nonlinear trend line of capabilities and also just kind of get a feel of our data a little bit more. So you can see in the 1940s, there seems to be kind of a spike in OPS. Um, this could be from a number of things, but you can see as um, pitching improves and gets better over time, you can see the OPS uh, dwindle a little bit. Um, so that's something cool. And now um, let's create another column in Hall of Fame batting uh, called home run rate. And let's say you wanted to see what the home rate was, home run, home run rate was for each era of baseball. So is there one time in baseball where hitters were hitting a lot more home runs and et cetera? So we create the home run rate column, and then we can create a layered strip chart of this data. And you can see a little bit, it's a little rough around the edges when using a strip chart, but it appears that dead ball doesn't have a lot of home runs, doesn't have a high home run rate per hitter. And that free agency tends to have a bit of a median that's higher than most. And so what should we do next? Let's create a dot plot instead, which gives us kind of a more concrete understanding of our, our data. And you can see that in the expansion era, which makes sense because this is when um, people were juicing and um, um, more uh, teams were being added. And um, this, I just think it's cool you can kind of get a feel for the different areas of baseball and how the game changes. Because I feel like in most sports, there wouldn't be this much fluctuation in home run rate, which is a pretty concrete variable, but yeah, pretty cool. Um, now I want to talk about the um, little bit of linear regression using uh, runs and wins. And we're going to create a model that tries to predict wins using run differential. Um, so for this one, we're going to uh, read in a different CSV. This one is teams, which has um, information on pretty much every team and game that's been played since 1871. So we're going to filter our data set um, and we're going to create a subset of the data and give it to my teams, a variable I made, with year ID, team ID, league ID, games, wins, losses, runs, and runs allowed. And then we're going to filter over here for only um, data that's above the year for teams and seasons uh, above the year 2000 just to look at the 21st century. And then we're gonna create um, two new variables like we've done before. And this can show that pandas arithmetic is super simple. You can divide, subtract, add columns as long as they're the same length. Um, it will not give you um, NA values if you try and do arithmetic on uh, columns of different lengths, it'll just throw you an error. So here you go. Um, now this is what our um, data frame looks like now that we've added a run differential and a win percentage statistic. You can see a negative run differential means that a team gave up more runs than it uh, scored. Pretty basic. Um, and so here we're going to use the, um, the graphing that we learned about in the first section to create a scatter plot with run differential on our X and win percentage on our Y. And then we've added an ordinary least squares trend line, which is basically just some squared error trend line. Um, kind of the most basic uh, line you can create for linear regression. And so this relationship makes a lot of sense because if you score, if you have a higher run differential, if you outscore more teams, you're likely to have a higher winning percentage. And so, um, like I say here, so now let's create a model that can try and, like I said, predict the number of wins a team is going to have based on their run differential. So to do this, we're going to use the, the stats models package and library in Python, which is pretty cool. Um, makes things pretty easy. That's also why I used Python rather than R for this, because first off, I like Python, and also there's a lot of stuff you can pull from that makes your life easier. And then um, this is us making the model. Um, 
we're using stats models formula API. Who remembers API from the, the last workshop? A little bit of pulling from there. Um, and so we're trying to predict win percentage using run differential. That's what this syntax is here. This is the data, and then we fit it to our model variable. And then uh, to check our model accuracy and see how the fit is, we can um, use the summary function, which gives us some important statistics. Um, we can see that it has a high R squared and a high uh, F statistic. And the coefficient for our run differential, um, the p-value for our run differential coefficient is low. Yes. I just use the ordinary least square. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I use the ordinary least squares function within stats models. Thank you for reminding me to talk about that. Just the function that you can use from the um, module that I pulled from where you identify the formula um, and the code is just OLS, ordinary least squares, like the line I had in the last scatter plot. I apologize for missing that. And then we use the fit function to fit it to the model. This is what our um, model looks like in terms of our summary. So we know it's, there's a strong relationship and a statistically significant relationship between run differential and win percentage. And so now we can use it to predict uh, wins and winning percentage. So we take, we add another column to our my teams data frame, uh, which equals the model predicting what our win percentage would be. And then uh, to get the predicted wins, we just create a simple formula to round um, the amount of games played times uh, the predicted win percentage. So, so again, pretty simple stuff. And then, yeah, adding columns in pandas is super simple and easy. And so let's check how our model did by first just getting a look at um, how it did just predicting wins and win percentage. So overall, pretty, pretty solid, not too shabby. But then uh, we can look at the residuals to see how accurate it was, which is just a better way of seeing it. And so first we get the influence from our model. And then we get the studentized residuals. I use the studentized residuals because they're generally better for outlier testing, which is what I'm going to get to in a second. And those also come from stats models, which is the library that we use to create our model fit. And so now let's create a graph, but this time let's not use Plotly Express and let's use Plotly's graph object module, which is where you can get into the more sophisticated graphing methodologies and capabilities. Um, so we import NumPy here because I'm going to be using some, some NumPy, and then we import Plotly graph objects as Go, once again, just making it easier to read and use. And so here, here I'll give you a sneak peek. This is what we're going to get. And this is our, this is the um, code we had to write. And so you can see here, it's basically, um, you're creating a figure using go.figure, which is going to be a scatter plot, which has the, um, the X as our run differential, and then Y as our residuals which we made up here, right, with our influence and the um, resid studentized internal function within stats models. And then um, mode is markers. That's essentially just um, a dot plot instead of a line. So if mode was line, it would be a line chart. And then marker, we make into a dictionary, um, which basically lets us um, get into the more Visualize like uh, fine tuning the visualization aspects of it. It's like what I wanted to do here was I wanted to um, highlight outliers. So we can see like which teams outperformed or underperformed the model by a significant amount. And so what I just made was a, a pandas series and then added some filters where if a, the residuals is over 2.8, it's an outlier. Um, I, those are that's an arbitrary value I created just for the purposes of this exercise to show that there are a couple of teams with really big. Um, differences in the model. Normally it would be three, so teams or residuals above three or below three. And then again, um, another filter for residuals less than or equal to 2.8. Um, if it's equal to, it's an outlier. If it's less than, it's normal. And then we convert those to a string so we can map those using a, um, mapping is essentially like a dictionary um, where normal is equal to zero and outlier is equal to one. And then we use those in the color scale function to map zero to blue and one to red. So as you can see here, um, we have three, essentially three teams that did much better or much worse than where it was expected by the model. And that can be from the fact that baseballs can be a really unlucky sport sometimes. So they probably just had some 
unlucky breaks or one of the parts of their team, like their bullpen was really bad. So I just think this is interesting. Um, kind of what you can do with baseball and linear regression, um, something cool. And so then this is again, uh, for those online and those that want to get into the, my GitHub and kind of look through my code, I added some annotations for most of my work. And then lastly, um, plot, I wanted to look at career trajectories because baseball does not have a similar career trajectories in terms of other sports where it's just like generally kind of a up and down. As we'll see, this can get a little more, it can be, I'm sorry. Not here. Um, it can be a little more interesting. And so for this one, we're going to use two different, um, mainly we're going to use batting. Um, more um, CSV files from the layman's database that we downloaded all of our information from. And then we're going to just replace all of our NA values with zero. Normally, you, you shouldn't just immediately do this, but for the purposes of this exercise, you can, because that an NA and zero mean the same for what I'm doing here. And so, yeah, that's basically what I did. Um, and now I just created a couple of functions using um, the lock locate function in pandas, which is super helpful. And this is when this is a skill that if you're going to use pandas for your for the future and in your career, I would definitely know this is how you kind of traverse a data database. Raise your hand if you ever use SQL. This is kind of just like the where this is how you filter through. And so essentially what I'm doing is um, creating a function that gets us the ID of a player because that's their unique key. It's not their first and last name. And so it just will just make um, finding players a lot easier. You can see I'm just searching through the master database using a first name and a last name input. Um, pretty simple stuff. And then it assigns it to the player ID or it equals the player ID in the um, other data frame. And then this one gets us a birth year for our for whatever player we're searching for, which will be important um, later when we're trying to get uh, statistics per year for players, because in the batting database, um, it's not really formatted that way. And so um, does anyone know why I need to do this actually? Why I need to um, change it so that if there's anyone with a birth year or birth month, which is less than July, we need to add one to their year. It's kind of a weird baseball quirk, but baseball age is defined as a, base, a player's age as of July 1st. I don't know why they decided to do that, but they did. Um, so what we need to do is, like I said, for anyone born before July, add one to their year. And so then now we make a third function, which is going to get us all the statistics we need um, for the plotting of our career trajectories. And so we're pulling this from the batting information, but we're getting, we want to get our own data frame, as you'll see in a minute. So what we're doing is um, getting the age, the slugging, the OBP, and the OPS for whatever player ID input we use, which we can get by using the get ID function that we made. And then this is where um, the get birth year function is important because um, as you can see for the age uh, column in our data frame, we need to subtract the birth year from the each year that we're getting the data from. And so then, yes, you can see the calculation for slugging is the same. This is the calculation for on base percentage. So it's um, hits plus walks and hit by pitches are added into the walks column of the database divided by hits at bats walks and sack flies, and then OPS is just slugging plus on base percentage. And so then we're returning um, these four important columns, and this is what we're going to use to look at career trajectories. And so I'm just going to use Mickey Mantle as an example. We get his um, ID, and then we use that to get his stats, and then boom. Now we have career statistics for Mickey Mantle. So, yeah. What we can use this for is getting a rough look at what his career looked like by looking at OPS, which is kind of the most encompassing stat that we have for this database. Um, if I were to do this again, I would probably try and find a, a war statistic, which is the most, probably the most encompassing um, offensive statistic you can use, but just for the purposes of this exercise, um, we're gonna use OPS. And you can see it's a little bit like a quadratic function generally. I mean, he's got some interesting quirks in his early and in, in late or mid to late twenties. Um, but generally, this is why do we use a quadratic? Because that's generally what a player's career looks like. And um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to model 
going to make a model that can predict any player's peak age based off of their OPS. And so to do this. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I feel like the reason that, just to go off what you're saying, like the, yep. like the career trajectory of Mickey Mantle, uh, he had bad knees for most of his career. Mm -hmm. So that could just be like injuries can impact what the OPS that people put up in a certain number of games. Mm -hmm. Plus, he had that freak injury where he tripped on the, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, sprinkler, right? So yeah, there's all these little little things in baseball that can impact your career and make your career trajectory look whack. And so here's a lot of code, which I'll try and go piece by piece here. So first, um, we're defining yeah we're defining our function. We're telling uh, the stats variable that it's um, it equals the stats. We're calling the get stats function for the same player ID input. And then what we're doing is we're using uh, NumPy's polyfit function here uh, to fit for um, age and OPS and then a degree of two. And then this poly one dimensional uh, function here just lets us, um, it's basically like a convenience uh, function. So it lets us look at the model um, and run operations on the model easily like it's a um, one dimensional array. And so then that's our X is a lin space. Um, which is basically just a, an interval of 50 points on a graph like this. And then we apply the model to these points to get our predicted curve. And then, so that's basically the model, which is pretty, pretty simple. The, the rest of it's the graphing aspect of it. So I, you can see I have two distinct graphs. One is a plot, um, is the scatter. So that's going to give us all the individual points for a player's yes. Wait, so lint space, I'm assuming that's the... No, no, that's just a series of points that we apply the model to. Um, oh, yes, you're right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And with what, like, for the range, this one, like, 20 and so on. This, yeah, this is just for the graph. Oh, uh, so it just has a one with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this this um, plot, the scatter, is of all the different points of his career, like we did up here. Scatter, we call this scat the, the get stats function. But um, in this one, this is where we're putting our. See, you can see mode is lines because this is where we're putting our our model. So to do to overlay two different um, graphs in Plotly, you just make two different ones and then you create. Another variable that's um, a list of both, and then you create you use the go figure function um, using this data. So once again, the plot is equal to the scatter, the line is equal to the line, and then the data is the plot and the line, and then the figure figures this out, and then boom. And then all this stuff at the bottom is just for refining the graph. So I wanted to add some lines that show the maximum value of OPS and age for the model. And then update y axis, update x axis. Again, um, you can see I'm just. I wanted to be able to. I wanted it to be able to translate to any player. So that's where the um, minus 0.1 and plus 0.1 is for the OPS, and the minus one and plus one is for the age. And then at the bottom, I just have some titles and naming. And so yeah, this is what you get. So you can see that Mickey Mantle's career has a pretty generally normal. Um, model or normal trajectory predicted by the model, as you can see. And then we have the two lines we've created, which is telling us that he peaked at um, age 27 with a predicted OPS of 0 0.98 at his peak. And so then I just wanted to try for other players that I thought would have different career trajectories, like David Ortiz. Um, so we call the get ID function to get his ID. Um, and then this is what his looks like. So you can see David Ortiz peaked way later. So he had a, he was pretty good throughout most of his career. And so this is telling us that he probably peaked at age 33. Does anyone know why David Ortiz might peak later than Mickey Mantle? Just for any baseball heads. Well, that and the fact that he was a designated hitter. So he never had to play in the field. That'll help. Um, That'll help a lot. And then just another one, Sammy Sosa. Um, he had a more general one, more gradual incline and then decline. Um, since I have a lot of time left, 
Does anyone have a player that we should try for our um, career projection chart function? Actually, you can't do him. He's not in the. They didn't include him in the oh, database. Yeah. yeah. Oh no! They, no, he's not. He's just for some reason he's not in this database. It's very confusing. Albert Pujols. Yep. So I'm gonna. This is a Jupiter. Oh shoot! This is a Jupiter notebook, by the way, for anyone wondering. So we're gonna use our function. Or Pujols. So this should get us. Oh, I gotta run the whole. All right, hold on. I gotta run everything. So yeah, this is just some um, general baseball analytics that you can do. Um, I kind of left it a little um, open-ended for people to go in and, and go into the GitHub and I wanted people to be able to build off of this. So using this, what you could do is extrapolate these um, career projections to the eras that we talked about earlier. And so then you can run it and see, you know, in different eras, are people peaking earlier or later? Uh, like Cole mentioned, are people in the juice ball era or the juice player era, are they peaking later because they're on steroids? Are they peaking earlier because they're on steroids? Um, just a lot of cool stuff that you can do. So now, career, career projection chart. I really hope this works. Okay, so now he he didn't have the he looked to peak. He had a pretty normal peak. What's disappointing is that this doesn't include this year, and I'd love to see how that factors in. It'll probably shift it uh, to twenty six because he's having a huge comeback year. I mean, you can see his OPS starting to dip um, under one point seven. Like, like like, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what. To, yeah, not a great sign. Um, I mean, you can have an all-star season in June. Yeah, what the? This is a bad look. Um, huh. Well, excluding Albert Pools, the function should... Can we do another one? i got to redeem myself here. Great one. What happened here? Let me make sure I didn't accidentally, like, I hope so. Actually, I'm, yeah, I like that more than trying another one. So, yeah, this was my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Comments? Concerns? Praise? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, oh, wait, actually, I have a good point. Um, one thing I will say that I tried to do more so in this presentation that I learned from my internship at Major League Baseball is that you can be as good and technical, like good and technical as possible, but your ability to relay your results and information is almost just as important. So that's why I tried to do as much data visualization as possible because um, there was an instance where I had to try and teach high leverage business executives about data science and they, they don't have a clue what's going on. They just wanna know how they can use what you're talking about to imp improve the product or the um, what they're doing. So being able to translate the data science is just super important. Yes. Oh, okay. I do agree that it's much easier to get started with, but I think you can make like much more sophisticated with the I tend to disagree. And it has a much bigger community. It has, a, it does have a larger community, but. Right? Um, I like, I, mean, I like plot lead. As in, like, you can do maybe 40, whatever. I mean, I don't think you can do yeah. plot lead, but you can do, like, 
I guess I guess no no I guess to your point like if you're trying to like talk to business people then it's better. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. Uh, thank you for the heckle. Um, <laughs> so why? Okay. So for your you use three squares for most of your work. It makes sense. Uh -huh. this um, what what package did you use? Like just ask model as a package. Mm -hmm. And um, polyfit from from numpy. Gotcha. Pretty, I I wanted to go uh, deeper into the linear regression and do some like testing and and other stuff and kind of maybe define one within. A different one, but I thought I would run out of time, which clearly I didn't. So I didn't um, chop it up like I thought I would. But well, what time was this place then? I ended well, like ten minutes early. Any ten minutes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do we have any questions from people online? No. Oh, Adam Dunn. Um, I uh, I would have, but I'm too scared that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Peyton, I'm I've heard your call. Oh get whoops. Well now you can see the stats. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I've always used like a Jupyter notebook. Uh -huh. It's like a Jupyter notebook that like has been really good. I, I used it like two years ago before it was super laggy, so I stopped using it. Yeah, this has been pretty good to me it's so far. Good. Plus, I like the dark theme and I didn't know how to do it in Google Colab, which oh. I only would have done. So. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, this one works. Sweet. So yeah, he ah, unfortunately for Adam, he looked like he peaked a little early. Wow, he had an interesting career. What happened in eight age thirty one? Kind of fell off. But yeah, this also um, just kind of even more of the general plotting like I did up here. You can see that um, it's harder in baseball to have a consistent career than in any other sport. Like you can be really good one year and then just fall off the next, and it's just from. Um, slumping, the yips, a uh, really minor injury, much like Starling Marte's oblique. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think I'm going to end it here. Do, uh, uh, did you have to install anything special to get the current surrender? Because for me, when I try to run it, it says that uh, a render could be found. Really? Yeah, I mean, I could I could do it if I like add a line of code and change it to render as PNG or something like that, but I can't get like the interactive buffer. So. Um, I did not. Are you okay, did the render depends also on what you're saying. He's using uh, VS Code, so I'm assuming VS Code kind yeah. of covers it all. I also tried it at Google Colab, and I got I didn't have to like install it. Yeah, I'm using code two plus two or uh, VS Code two, but uh, I'm actually using. Mm. I apologize. Sorry. Right. And like I said, I can change the render of PNG. Yes, cool. If you wanted to know why Adam Adam does the PS fell off, I'm gonna to try to read you some of the stats in this age thirty one season, which would have been two thousand eleven. Please do. I will certainly will. He I got a link from you so I can get a link really have the right number in front of me. He had sixty six in one hundred and twenty two games, he had sixty six hits, sixteen doubles, eleven homers, forty two RBIs, and hundred and seventy seven strikeouts in the play. He also added 159. Oh. Wow. And then surprisingly, comes back in 2012 and redeems himself a little bit. So. 151 games, 110 hits. He also batted 204. Huh. I'm going to thank you all for coming. I'm going to end the uh, stop recording.